Mic check, Tracy. Mic check, Tracy. Um, check, check, one, two, three. Mic check, mic check, one, two, three. In our busy newsroom, we begin with breaking news. With long hours and tight deadlines, thank you for being with us. There's a bond we all share, forged in a job that is unlike any other. This is not the first time the school. But for Yvonne Labor and myself, it's a connection that has grown even stronger over the past year. I'll never forget when I heard the words, you have cancer. Mm. What was your reaction? Instantly, crying, bawling. Not why God, why me, but more so like, I'm 30. In November, Yvonne learned that she had stage three breast cancer, and I learned that I had invasive cervical cancer. I was 38 and pregnant with my third child. I was terrified, not for myself, but the life of my unborn baby. A third of women with cervical cancer die. And to me, it is the most heartbreaking thing that I do. Because unlike many cancers, Dr. Cecilia Boardman says cervical cancer is among the most preventable. With our 3D imaging, we can In the world of breast cancer, radiologist Dr. Scott Summers says the same thing holds true. It is never easy to tell someone they have cancer, but I feel better about it when I can tell them we caught it early. For Yvonne, that diagnosis did not come early enough. She's undergone a double mastectomy, weeks of radiation and chemotherapy, a burden that has taken its toll. Last day of chemo. Despite her high spirits and strong support system. It was to the point where I was trying to shower and I couldn't even, I couldn't even shower myself. I couldn't bathe myself. If I felt, oh my goodness. It felt like death, you know, like that, that was the lowest point. I just, I just wanted it to be over. For me, that low point came in March during my second surgery. When I had to give birth six weeks early to undergo a radical hysterectomy. Is that kind of good for lungs that she's yeah, crying? Yeah. My baby, her tiny lungs not quite developed, struggled to breathe and was put on a ventilator. My guilt was overwhelming. It's the reason I'm telling my story now, and so is Yvonne. What kept you going? Honestly, God, my family, my friends, my determination to show that you can get through this just to any other woman that I meet. 232,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year, 12,000 with cervical cancer. Yet the national guidelines are scaling back. In the field of cervical cancer, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, an independent group of national health care experts, is now recommending that women get pap smears every three to five years instead of every year, unless they have an abnormal pap result or they test positive for the human papillomavirus a virus that affects 80% of the population. One of the reasons why the screening guidelines have changed in the past few years is that the progression from HPV infection to precancer to invasive cancer is actually fairly slow. But in some cases like mine, the cancer is more aggressive. Up until my pregnancy, I had never had an abnormal pap smear. So despite my own doctor's advice back in 2012, I let more than a year lapse between tests. Still, my doctors were surprised by the cancer's progression in that short time. And that's the issue that we struggle with. The statistics, the epidemiology tell us that we have years, but clinically what we're seeing, what I'm seeing in my practice is women who've been one to two years with a normal pap previously who now have either a significant precancer, such as adenocarcinoma in side two, or have actually already developed invasive cancer. Perfect. The new guidelines for breast cancer are also causing heated debate, but unlike the cervical cancer guidelines, they are not endorsed by leading cancer organizations. The same task force is now recommending that women age 50 and above, no longer 40, get mammograms every other year instead of annually. Just take it one day at a time. The task force argues screening younger women is difficult because of dense breast tissue. 
Therefore, more patients are getting false positive results and being exposed to unnecessary testing. Nipple has to be centered. But at the Ellen Shaw Day Paredes Institute for Women's Imaging, doctors are now using state-of-the-art 3D technology that's catching cancer in younger women. When you talk about costs of early detection versus late detection in cancer, the difference could be a hundred times as much. The guidelines are just that, they're guidelines. While um, doctors like Leah Moore Burke say they'll continue to use their best clinical judgment, they say patients must also be proactive. The Gardasil vaccine, for example, could eradicate cervical cancer for future generations. Let's say we vaccinated 80% of all 11 and 12 year old girls and boys. We would reduce cervical cancer by 53,000 cases in their lifetime. While that vaccine was not available to my generation. All right, Maddie. Hey, can we just do good things? Okay, we'll do good things. Today, I am cancer free. <laughs> Yvonne recently finished her last treatment with a good prognosis. It hit me afterward. Yeah. Is it hitting you now too? Yeah, I've had my emotional days. <laughs> While, yes, statistically, our stories are more rare. There you go, Dad. That one's for Mommy. They are still happening to women just like us. Kids. Kids. Mothers and daughters, oh wives job, and sisters. Tracy, I appreciate you. Oh, my goodness, it's kind of healing. And it's our hope that we can make a difference. You have a life to live, and you have somebody to live for.